What's up, guys? This is Heiss, and yes, it is Montezuma Tuesday today. Gonna keep on working on our CAD model and see what we can get into today. Got a little bit more work to do on the boiler. Uh, sorry for it ended up being so late compared to normal. Uh, I've been uh, dealing with allergy season sinus sadness, uh, and it uh, that comboed with a very full weekend of steam trains and rock and roll and all these things. Um, <laughs> I've been just wiped out. Um, I laid down a little bit earlier today and was like, it's fine. We'll just, you know, we'll just take a quick break. And then I like conked out for like three hours. <laughs> so I uh, was intending to stream earlier, but here we are. Uh, that said, we are going to get into the model today and continue working on boiler things. We got it pretty far last time from what we can show here. Um, redoing it to be riveted. We've got the butt seam. We've got the uh, actual tube sheet on the front. Backhead sheet, throat sheet, which was the enigma that we were struggling with before then. Um, and then the side sheets. And we kind of need to do some tweaks uh, on the barrel to get the clearance there right. And then we need to do um, some work to get the mud ring in, which is going to involve tweaking the throat sheet and the backhead sheet a little bit. Um, so that's going to be a little interesting. But that's kind of what we're going to get into to start today. Um, and if we end up having time, then we will screw with uh, making the interior firebox as well. So, uh, yeah. Uh, looking forward to fun stuff, but I can see that we've got some membership anniversaries here, so let's take a look. Lily and an engineer for 15 months. Black cats are wonderful because you can stare into the void, and not only does the void stare back, sometimes it trots up to you and happily be begs for pats. The void is loud and wants chicken. Uh, that sounds about right. My uh, my first cat when I was growing up was a black cat, and he was delightful. So that's, uh, that's a good time. <laughs> Mad Lad, a fireman for 12 months. Oh my God, you made it to a year. Yes, you have. Thank you so much. Enjoy the gold lamp. <laughs> Super Blue Hedgehog, one year as conductor. How did this happen? Hi, what are you trying to pull? Either way, keep the awesomeness coming. Thank you. I appreciate that. <clears throat> Jordan Freeman. Hey, don't trash on the teenage too much in episode two. They did give us two good things, preserved Alco PAs. Uh, that does not that does not cover for the cursedness that was their steam locomotives. Their steam locomotives were a strange travesty. Yes, they had cool diesel things and they were a neat railroad too, but the don't look at their steam engines. And then SolidWorks. Well, I was having a good day. Well, 
We go toe to toe in the box once again, SolidWorks. <laughs> Goodness. ETW Gaming, an engineer for 10 months. Choo Choo still won't ever leave before this. Nothing, uh, but now gonna be here till you're 20. Okay, cool. Gamer Boy, is it late? Is that why I got the start? Well, probably. EDD mixes, you've also slept through the start of something. Eh, it happens. True Nova Gaming, shovel faster, Captain Heist wants more speed. I hope everything is well with you, my friend. Looking forward to much more from you in the future. Awesome, guys. Yeah, appreciate y'all. Well, we're gonna jump into Discord. We got a couple friends in here today. Looks like we've got Corey and we've got Sits. So say hello if you feel like it. Hello. Here we hey are. <laughs> Matt Houston, if SolidWorks can't take the heat, they should drop their fire. You're very right. I really should. I have managed to press a function key that has done. Okay, so F F11, first guess. Love that. All right. So we need to alter the barrel for the first part. Because the barrel, I guess. I wish I had an interior shot of this. The barrel's got to get cut out for the mud ring transition only on the bottom. Yeah, that's going to get interesting. We'll figure it out, though. And there's a lot of this that I don't really want to model, uh, particularly when we get into the mud ring stuff, because the, uh, the way that you actually fabricate it is you grind it to fit. So it's like... There's no no need to sit there and get all the nerdy details exactly perfect, so. Oh, Lord. Put the seam exactly at 9 o'clock on the one side, so getting the, the seam in the assembly is going to get interesting. Can I modify the part in place in the assembly? I wonder. Maybe. Open part in position. Oh yeah, there we go. That's the that's the ticket right there. Oh, well, no it's not. Never mind. Try and close out of that and see if I can do that again. Yeah, it just puts the camera at a weird angle. All right, we should probably just put the the butt strap at a very sensible angle then in our uh, in our thing here, because I think we just kind of set it to be whatever. Did I have an ankle, mate? Or did, oh, oh, I think I just fixed it. Yeah, that's probably all I did. Which is not smart. We'll float it. And then, yeah, we can spin it. All right, so what we'll do is we'll put it, uh, put it up at a 45, I guess. Because I should be able to mate. that surface gonna be what I want looks normal to the boiler right there so we've got that surface we get that surface and then we do an angle it is that 45 degrees Look like it. Doesn't look like it, does it? Maybe well, the, uh, the because bottom part it's, is that. It's still radially extruded. It's not, yeah. I think it's part of the thing. It might be 45 degrees from that, which actually looks about right. That'll be a known quantity that we can deal with at the very least, so. So we can know that when we have to do a cut on this, um, we need to do the cut on this side and we need to 
orient it in a very strange way, which is gonna be stupid, but that's all right. Oh goodness. All right, let's take a look at these top chats here. Paraclasm, hey, while you're here in Pennsylvania, do you tend to visit the museum here too? There's a trolley museum in South Pittsburgh and Washington as well. Uh, it's not on my calendar, but I haven't really planned that trip yet. Um, much to the dismay of some of my friends. So uh, we'll see, it'd be cool. Midwest Rail fan, you're doing this and watching memes at the same time. Wonderful. Alexander E. Alexander E. Ackerman, a brakeman for 22 months. Hey, hi, it's Big Mac, technically cl classifies as lasagna. Thankfully, Leighton Moreland is not here to stoke this fire. <laughs> Come on. Yes. And William Grantham, 22 months as an engineer. My man, we're almost coming up on two years of memberships. Good, good lord. So uh, that's getting crazy. Thank you so much. Appreciate you. Jopsy Duck, almost two years. What? Conductor for 22 months. I know. God, how have we. How's this been two years? It's crazy. Jackson wages year that SolidWorks is about to crash. That's its secret. It's always about to crash. And Jay Christensen, you want to make the big blue dumpster in HO scale? Uh, okay. If you have to. <laughs> okay. So. We know that we need to ba basically do a crazy sketch. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna sketch and we're gonna sketch on that plane. And we're gonna do our center line here out to there. And we're gonna do another center line out to that bottom point there, and we're gonna put these guys at a 45 degree angle. And that gives us the horizontal center line of the boiler. So yes, it's canted, but uh, that's uh, that's what we're dealing with here, so. <laughs> Circles and things. Circles and things be like, yeah. So, okay. And then what? What distance are we looking at? It doesn't have to be perfect, but we're kind of looking at... If I could just get that exact little spot, that'd be great, but we'll see. Take our measuring tool. Now we can get those pieces at least. 22 and an eighth. Maybe we do 22 and a quarter and just slurp it off. So we kind of reorient things a wee bit. We draw a rectangle that is very confusing and we make those guys parallel. Why won't that allow that to be a thing? Okay, fine, I will draw my own rectangle with blackjack and hookers. Why you gotta do this to me, SolidWorks? Set off 90 there. And then we get a center line in this guy. This is what we goofed up last time. It's not getting things centered. And now if we just do an extruded cat for like, I don't know, six inches? Maybe. Ciao. Let's do that. See what happens. <laughs> Go to the assembly and see if that looks vaguely correct. Uh, hashtag fucking nailed it, boys. It's all going to be ground and peened and welded and, and whatever there, but... Or hammered over, but look at that. First try! 
with the crazy geometry and all. You love it. <laughs> all right. I hear lots of dings, so. <clears throat> James Buckner, Brakeman for 15 months. Wait. For what? Rotor Davis, hard to believe it's been an, a year and a half as an engineer. Thank you for what you've created because you've gotten into Steam and met some of the best people I know. I am so happy for you, my friend. Uh, that's wonderful. Jordan Freeman, as a fellow fan of MXC, I want to let you know that all five seasons are available on Prime Video. Yes, we love MXC. <laughs> The most extreme elimination challenge. Beautiful. Mike Hant, a conductor for four months, four down, more to go. Appreciate you. Platform minus one, conductor for six months. Will any composition of steel do for boiler manufacturing or do you need a certain blend? Uh, you need a certain blend. It's a very specific steel uh, for boiler material. You don't use just anything like A36. You have to use uh, engineered stuff for boilers which varies across many different applications of engineering and we don't need to get into the crazy details but stuff that usually has a yield strength in the 50 to 60 to 70 thousand psi range versus a 36 being 36 thousand pounds so yeah penzi conductor for four months evening garage band midi sucks Fun to do boredom things with, but sucks. SolidWorks sucks more though. I'm sorry for your loss. Yeah, doing MIDI tracks in those sorts of programs are, eh, they're always kind of whatever. So there's, there's good tech out there, but it costs a fair amount of money. So what are you gonna do? Matt Houston, shit, you forgot your emotional support K4. Those are important. Rare to Davis, next time you're in Pennsylvania, you should come by and check out Rough and Tumble and uh, Amazing Jested show with the nonsense Shay. I'm not sure exactly what that was. Um, but okay. That'd be fun to see. And then Railroad to Davis, that was supposed to say Amazing Steam Show. That makes more sense. I was worried about you smelling toast in the moment. So, thank you. John Rhodes from Zuma. Can I stop being fucking pixels yet? Uh, I, I, yeah, we want to see not pixel Zuma soon enough. Uh, I've been chatting with a friend of mine, um, a friend of mine's machinist, Barry, if you're out there, and he wants to start cutting out parts. So, uh, <laughs> it's, um, it's kind of exciting. We might, uh, we might be starting to actually get physical things this year, hopefully. So, yeah. Farm Shop Chronicles, you bought your first model train and thought you'd regret it. You've been watching it spin for the past 45 minutes. We like watching trains do the thing, uh, no matter the size and no matter how simple. Yeah, they're a, they're a joy. So I'm glad that you're experiencing that. Joe Newstead. Oh, go ahead. That, that's not the part you regret. The part you regret is buying more and more and more until you're broke. Uh, yeah, that's that's very true. <laughs> I almost made very poor decisions today. I was gonna say, did you end up buying any of the things you Snapchatted me? I I didn't. Smart man. I won't say good man, but I will say smart man. <laughs> yes, not it was bad, but smart. Yeah, I did get other stuff though. I'll an send you a snap an of another that. time. Yeah, that's uh, that's fun. Could forward to see more progress on the layout. I'm gonna have to come see it in person. So. Mm -hmm. Joe Newstead, happy Tuesday, Mark. I hope you're doing well, homie. Thank you. Appreciate you. Rex Anger, there he is. An engineer for 11 months. Happy Wednesday to the Burb Man. Main, well, technically branch line steam is a vibe. Ditto meet space routing with the fellow Discord idiot on said main branch line. And tarring coach roofs. Keep doing the good work. Yeah, you've been busy lately. It's been fun seeing pictures of all that. So I hope to get down there uh, one of these days. And Paraclasm, heading out, callable in the AM. Don't let SolidWorks give you too much trouble. Uh, thank you so much. So, yeah. Well, we fixed our boiler barrel real quick. I guess we need to make a mud ring now. Uh, and in order to do that, we kind of need to edit our uh, rear, our back head sheet and our throat sheet. So, let's open those guys up. 
back had she riveted to that one. <laughs> that be the one. Hmm, how do we do this? I guess for the portion of, yeah, okay. So I need to sketch on here for the portion of it that is straight. It's gonna be holding the seam together with the mud ring. What we do is we just make a couple boxes right there and then we extrude them, I don't know, four inches maybe. And then we put a chamfer on them from what I've learned with SolidWorks and, and non-equal chamfers is that they probably won't like doing it this way. But they might be okay with it. Oh, okay. Actually, all right with it. Skin those down to nothing, and then the rest of that would just be a peened over seam. Okay, so that's a fixed back head sheet. Now let's open the throat sheet, do the same thing. So we'll sketch on that profile up to the straight height there. And then we do another extrusion, four inches. We do another chamfer. And this is simulating the sheet being ground down to nothing and the uh, the mud ring being ground to match it. Just like that, okay. And then when we go into our boiler assembly, it now makes a kind of smooth section like that. And now we need to draw a mud ring which is gonna be it's gonna be what it's gonna be it's gonna <laughs> I guess we could draw that profile yeah there's no harm in drawing that profile okay we'll just draw the we'll just draw that profile why not all right so new part God, do I want to make it a rectangle to start? I guess we can make the, the center of it be a rectangle. Let's start on the top plane. <clears throat> and then we'll have that, and we'll have the slight curve, and then we'll have a I'm gonna use an extensive amount of mirrors for this, I think. Yeah, just do that, extend that, get the center line. That just wants to make it tangent from the other line. That's understandable and also annoying. Might be able to just do a thing there. And then just set that to be zero. Just slurp those together. No, it won't let me do that zero. Okay. What if I say that these guys are merged? They cannot be merged. Okay, SolidWorks. What if I do this more smartly and we start with that and then do that? Ka chow. And then do that. There you go. <laughs> All right. I see we got a lot more top chats coming in. Good to see. Appreciate you guys. Let me take a look see, see what we got here. Joan Eastead, Zuma to Heist. Gee, Heist, what are we doing today? The same thing we do, Zuma. Try to take over the world. 
Yes, Pinky. <laughs> Thank you, Joe. Virtual Rail Fan Productions, currently listening to the stream while playing Railroads Online. Been busy building a town. Engineer for 21 months. Uh, if you want to have a good time, um, get the trains flying through the air somehow and then set the brakes. Don't ask me how I know. <laughs> Rex Sanger, trying to assemble a firebox, mud ring, and bars must be really grating work. Yes. Yes. Correct. <laughs> Limes. Limes. Bandan, but it's something to get fired up about, Rex. Yes, it is something to get fired up about. More limes. Farm Shop Chronicles. Updated on my first model experience. My NS Gone keeps fucking derailing. Yeah, welcome to the toy of model trains. There there will be lots of derailment shenanigans, uh, and it takes it takes some time to sort out, so it's a it's a time, so. Nicholas Downs, an engineer for 14 months. How many pounds per hour or horsepower boiler is the Zuma's boiler going to be? Christ on a bike. I've not even thought about that. I'll have to get back to you on that um, in terms of steam generation capacity. We're not really going to know that at where we're at in the engineering because we haven't done the engineering for the oil burning setup. And that's going to probably change things significantly. So... Uh, we'll, we'll try and walk through that uh, at some point in the near future, but good question. Glenn Holland, hello from Omaha, in town for an AAR committee meeting. Perhaps not glamorous, but a new experience. Hope you're well, buddy. Good to see you, Glenn. Uh, and that's fun. Uh, <laughs> yeah, not glamorous, but AAR meetings are always interesting. So, Or really not interesting. It's kind of a either or, but either way, important. And Rex Anger, Pandan, you ain't wrong. It's worth staying for. <laughs> you guys are having no fun. All right. Let's go get some dimensions. Get our measuring tool out here. Is it going to let me pick that point? There we go. That's probably like 38 inches, if I was going to guess. 40 and a half. Okay. 40 and a half inches from the tapered bits. And then we got the four inches of taper. Oh, and then we got some straight. Okay. Oh, we do have some straight after that. Okay. Well, I didn't. Right, duh, because that, that's how that's how the seam work, dot PNG. Right. Okay. Well, then I, I drew this wrong, but that's okay. What else is new? The original way I drew it would have been fine. That's fine. All right, so this is gonna be 40 and a half inches. And then this there is gonna be a half inch. And then that way is gonna be four inch. Okay, and we jump back over to the barrel and figure out, not that, give me a fresh measurement. So that's probably, oh, that might be that two and a quarter number that we kept coming up with last time. If it'll, if it'll let me actually measure it, come on. Inch and a quarter, okay. Inch and a quarter followed by a two and a quarter radius. All right, inch and a quarter, sounds perfect. Followed by a two and a quarter radius. And then what is the width at the top there? After the radius. Let's see. What is it? That's probably uh, that might be the twenty-two and a whatever it is. No, that is not not what I wanted to click on. Come on, give me the little dot. Can I have the little dot? Yeah. No. SolidWorks, why is your UI this bad? What do you want to measure to? Uh huh. Uh huh. So cute. 17 and 5 eighths, okay. 
Interesting. Guess that maths out. So we do 17.625 over two. All right, that has defined that exterior path and we'll mirror the pieces out. Now we kind of need to do the interior path. It's gonna be a thing. How thick is the, how thick is it meant to be again? Let's dive into our 26D drawing. I want to say it's like two inches. Okay, it's literally two inches. It's, ex it's ex precisely two inches between interior and exterior sheets. The mud ring is only two inch thick. Oh, and what we learned, well, we don't necessarily want to do offset entities, do we? Speaking of the mud ring, there's a question in chat about what is a mud ring and what does it do? Oh, that's where the mud go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we can we can answer that. Let me uh, let me grab uh, these couple top chats, then we'll talk about what a mud ring is and, and what what it's properly called. Mud ring is the slang. So, Jordan Freeman, if the idiots did their own dub of MXC, who would voice Kenny, Vic, Guy, and Captain Tennille? Um or Guy, not Guy. Uh, it would absolutely be Brett and I doing uh, Kenny and Vic. Um, I would probably be, be Kenny and Brett would probably be Vic. Leighton would absolutely be Guy LaDouche. And Captain Tenny. I mean, Captain Tennille is such a small role. I want to do that now. That would be delightful. We'd get so cancelled so fast. But that show is delightful. <laughs> Jacob Pfeiffer, you want to see an HO scale uh, working draw boat? That would be fun. That episode was so much fun. So. <laughs> Grimsdale draw boat and Zuma win. JK, unless. No, we're not. We're not making a, uh, a draw boat on a Zuma. And Jay Christensen, your cursed train is 47 minutes away from your current location. Interesting. Hmm. Anyway, uh, the mud ring is what we're building right now. It's properly called the foundation ring. It is the giant thick piece of steel that makes up the bottom of the firebox. Um, it's what's below the water space. So this is our exterior firebox sheet all the way around here on the side sheets, the throat sheet, side sheet, and the back head sheet. Um, and then what creates the space for the, uh, the rest of things is the foundation ring, which is a very thick piece of steel which is what we're designing right now that sits in that gap there. And then you, you're going to have your interior firebox sheets. So it's uh, the very bottom of the firebox. And we call it the mud ring because uh, it's where all the garbage collects. Everything kind of filters down. And when you do a boiler wash, you get all sorts of crap in there uh, that you have to wash out. And so it's commonly referred to as the mud ring because it's got mud and things and stuff and, and or it's uh, uh, associated with it. So question but yeah it's the the foundation for the firebox end of the boiler rex anger in response to all the draw boat comments in the chat the best draw boat is the boat you draw yourself <laughs> good good <clears throat> and so that's what we're trying to sketch right now And it was on the side sheet that they had two inch clearance. So I guess the uh, the clearance otherwise is gonna be like inch and a half, which is, that's not the other world. So we'll do that. And then we're gonna do, we're gonna do a double set of mirroring here. No, SolidWorks. That way, come on. All right. Let's see. Make 
those guys vertical, make those guys horizontal. Theoretically, I could make those guys. Yeah, no, they can be concentric. All right. Like that inch and a half, and that should automatically make that two inch. Sweet. I guess I have to trim the uh, rest of that guy. I don't care if it's unsolvable, I'm blowing it up. Go away. I don't care about that. Why did they make everything mad? Oh my goodness. SolidWorks, you are you are a challenging thing sometimes. All right, so now, theoretically, if we do a mirror entities and we grab all of our little bits there, and then we mirror them about top plane, that line, oh, hang on, I don't want to mirror that line, I want to mirror about that line, kapow, yeah, there we go. And then we do another mirror. And we want to grab all of our friends up there. And then we want to mirror about that line. We're missing that guy. Kapow. All right, now we can do an extrusion. And we want those regions, those regions, those regions. Okay. How thick is that? Let's say it's also like two inch or something. Let me pull it up. Blech. that inch and three no seven and three quarter it can't be two inch where is your dimension for that friendo maybe it's on the other drawing god that's right in the middle over everything else Oh, interesting. We've got a bigger water space in the front than I had planned for by an inch. Okay. Mm -hmm. We don't have a dimension in the back. Cool. Thanks, Baldwin. No, it's seven and three quarters there. I wait. I'm not seeing where that dimension is in terms of the height of the foundation ring, which is challenging. If that whole thing is sixteen to somewhere. That's four, that's two inch. No, it's not quite half. We're gonna call it inch and a half and call it a day. Kapow. One foundation ring. And let's go put that into the assembly real quick and then we'll take a look at top chat stuff. I heard some whistlings going on. Insert components. Oh, did I not save that with a name? No, it's just part one, that's why. All right. Save this PC foundation. 
string riveted. Match the rest of our naming schema there. Because we were not good about that before. It's fine. Uh, foundation ring riveted. Kapow. And we should be able to just grab that guy, put him there. Grab that guy, put him there. And then get the height set with those guys. There you go. Uh, well, mostly. Remember when I said it wasn't going to match up by an inch? <laughs> How did we manage to plan for that? That's, uh, that is hilarious. I don't think I planned for that. I think I screwed that up. Just JB welded. It's fine. I didn't give it as much straight piece there. Yeah, how much, uh, how much wrong is that? Let's see. It's inch and three quarter. Oh, but the, uh, the diagonal slices aren't quite lining up. Grinder and paint makes me the welder I hate. I mean, that is kind of the vibe at this point <laughs> of actual fabrication, so, uh, but, yeah. What did I screw up in CAD that made it look this stupid, though? A half inch. All right, while well, we go look at our sketch. I must have looked at the wrong thing there. I'll make it 41 inches. Just use a lot of filler rod, it's fine. I mean, you know, it's, that is a strategy. I won't say it's a good strategy, but it is a strategy. Okay. That's filled up that. And then, what's that gap? A half inch. All right, so it didn't quite, didn't quite get her uh, mud ring aspirations quite right on that end, but I guess we'll get to figure out which end of it is which. Presumably the top's the mud ring, but we'll figure it out. Let me, uh, let me grab these top chats. <laughs> Jay Spellerin, a conductor for 12 months. Holy moly, a full year. Thanks for rekindling my love for trains. Looking forward to where it takes me over the next 12. Thank you, my friend. I appreciate that. Allison Chains. Fun fact, the Boston and Maine called their 2102s mud suckers because it was rumored that they were so powerful they could suck the mud out of the mud ring. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised. Uh, you wouldn't want that for your throttle valve or your piston valve or your cylinders or anything. Uh, but... Uh... <laughs> Choo-choo's will suck from the boiler pretty hard, so it can be pretty impressive. SolidWorks. Dang it, I'm trying my best. Do you know how hard it is to run using this drunk-ass code? Well, it's fair. It's fair. It can be challenging. Rutger Lamberson. Heist, thank you for the muttering explanation. Google mentioned the relationship between the wrapper sheet and inner firebox, but not that it was at the base of the firebox. Makes so much more sense now. Thanks for the lo the local knowledge in your videos. Thank you so much, my friend. I appreciate the, uh, the huge top chat, and I appreciate uh, getting to teach you something. So, yeah, it's a... Uh, it's so interesting. So much of the Steam Train stuff is on the internet, but so, mo so much of it isn't. You have to have the kind of knowledge of what to Google and search for to find those things. It could be so challenging. So uh, happy to help connect the dots. So Zimzam, you pay enough, uh, pay a welder enough per DM and they can fill a gap in the ozone layer of water. <laughs> a good one at least, yeah. Colonel Cactus, a fireman for 22 months. I think the straight bit between the angle and the curve should have been inch and 75, not inch and 25. I worked for the, uh, the, the back head sheet. It didn't work for the throat sheet is the weird thing, so. Oh, and it worked because it was too big. Well, maybe it should have been inch and a half. 
hole. Well, it's not worth mucking over too much because this is uh, not something that really matters and it's a ground fit joint, so. We'll not, we'll not uh, struggle too much more then. Rex Anger. <laughs> Surprise economy breakage because it needed doing. Loving the work doing here. Heist and hope to go to meet space routing with you fine folks and your little dude one day soon. Off to fight the good fight with silver bituminous paint again. Have a good one, folks. Rex, thank you so much for being a treasure in my life. <laughs> and I look forward to next year when, uh, yeah, hopefully Australia things can happen. So. <laughs> you you want to share your screen so I can see what's going on? What are you not gonna watch the stream? Hi, Dusty. Hi. Well, I mean, I can watch on YouTube, but it's behind. It is delayed. Hopefully, it won't mess with us this time. Last time, it was um, giving the stream some trouble, but we'll try and give it a go. Thirty-nine hundred class, a connector for nineteen months. You picked up an original nineteen forty-two Santa Fe instructions for engine min manual. Your main collection obsession is more old books than model trains. Uh, there are many like you, uh, and it's very valuable to find all those sorts of fun things. So uh, that's cool. Here's to be working, but I have music. Uh, yeah, you can just turn the volume off on the stream. Farm Shop Chronicles model update number two. The longer it spins, the stronger the addiction grows. Also feels like BNSF stuff. In a NNW consist feels like a sin. Well, maybe a little bit. It's fine, but it's all right. Jake Christensen, check your email to see the cursed train that I like to call the Tie Fork Monstrosity, located at the Tie Fork rest stop in Spanish Fork Canyon. Uh, okay, let me take a quick look and see what we can find. Why do I have a feeling there's going to be angry burp noises? Unfortunately, Chrome is trying to crash, so hopefully the stream is still up. <laughs> it looks like it is. Still running. Google Chrome is uh, struggling on the struggle bus, so I guess um, while that continues to struggle, I guess I will continue to try and uh, grinder and paint Welder You Ain't into uh, end of the... the uh... Oh, hang on. Oh, it started working here. Uh, oh, no, no, not like this, not like this, not like this. What is, what? This is, this is, what is this is, what is that? It's, uh, it's supposed to represent the helper engines of the DNRGW, uh, running the grades there, apparently. What? And it is just a park bullshit artist monstrosity of pain. My, my head hurts. No. No. Not like this. What not the hell is not even like that? this. Like if you look at it if you look at it from here up, it doesn't hurt. <laughs> but, but from anywhere below that <laughs> this looks like uh, this looks like Chuffy from Banjo Tooie, although it's the wrong kind of four four zero. It's an O four four with backwards. No, just no, 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 no. Thank you, Jordan, but also no. <sighs> Philip R, I miss SolidWorks sometimes, by the way. Still waiting for the 10 levels of PTC Railroad 101 video. Oh, God. That one fell off the back of the stove, didn't it? Yeah, I should probably do that one at some point. <laughs> All right. Let's see about fixing this. If we... I mirrored all this stuff, so it's not going to play nice with me doing other things with it. Mm. 
so I guess I will just draw the other profile over top of it and hope it works. Oh, we wanted more water space there. We actually don't need this inner line. That's right. All right, so then we make sure that these guys are tangent and that those guys are tangent. those guys are collinear and that those guys are collinear and then we get a tangent right there and the tangent right there and what what pray tell is not defining those oh I guess the radius because yeah you could do that oh I guess we do need to keep the two and a half or two and a quarter inch radius don't we Okay, and then we change our extrusion profile rather than picking that. Get that guy, that guy, that guy, that guy, and that guy. Ka chow. Ka chow. Ka chow. Theoretically. It. You would want to be in there backwards, wouldn't you? Son of a bitch. And there's Jimmy with the puns. Okay. I'm just sharing my giant nuts to everybody in VC text. Oh, do you work on your giant nuts some more? Yeah, I forgot to take a picture of them. Castellated, though. I got one of them castellated today. Nuts. Bummer. Two inch in thread pitch. Dusty's making some big nuts. I, I guess I could say Dusty has some big nuts. Yeah. Look at those. Look at the look at the size of them. <laughs> and a good can't be tight if it's liquid moment over there. Yep. That's per pretty. Pretty. Yeah, I forgot, to, I forgot to take a picture after we got the one castellated today. We'll do it tomorrow. Cool. And nice. then I started to make the hat washer too, and I think I already screwed up the first one, but that's okay. Yeah. Well, machining, can't, machining can't, can't be as screwed up as the original hat washer. No, no. <laughs> I, I think I undersized it already on the outer diameter slightly, and I'm like, oh, whoops. I'll just weld it up and cut it again. Yeah, that's well, that's true. Or I not. could do that. You, you could, but that'd be a little, a wee bit silly. Ricky taught me well. I ordered extra material just in case. That, that, yeah, that is, uh, that's always wise. Don't plan on nailing it. Yep. Ah, yes, SolidWorks. That's, that's how I wanted that to go. Cool. Look at that. That's a gorgeous foundation ring. 
That's a nice boiler. It's a burler. All right, we can maybe get a, a little little start on the firebox here now. It's gonna get interesting. <laughs> Sorry, I just saw Sam Nicastro's pop chat <laughs> to see my nuts on Friday. Ten out of ten. Let's see Dusty's nuts on Friday. I was proud of him. I was showing them off to everybody. You should have been. Those are some big nuts. <laughs> Followed by a comment from Ashley Taylor. I don't watch your stream to hear about Dusty's nuts. Jeff says he's been hearing about Dusty's nuts all week. And that's actually Ashley Taylor, Ashley Taylor. <laughs> that is that is that is our Ashley Taylor. <laughs> it's fine. It's uh... fine. <laughs> but yeah, you guys need to cheap cheap carbide i put the link to where we buy our stuff there's, from. there's so many jokes to be made here and we have been making them all week dusty's got some big nuts it's fine you've been making them all week that's nuts it yeah. is well it took me five hours because i had to start with round bar and make it hex and it took five hours just to make the hex part yep yeah and once you've rounded off the uh the, the corners it doesn't even look like it's not a not perfect hex <laughs> no yeah the digital readout goofed up in the middle of one of the passes on the hex and thought i got it back to where it was and nah it was slightly off but yeah it's it's still mostly better you know, than the clog hex. iron pipe wrenched on bullshit that was on the engine before yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll take it oh, that's funny james patterson the man, the myth, the cog. Looks like we're thinking outside the box this episode, eh? Sorry, too fired up on puns for tonight. Adding to the uh, the problem here. Fireman for 22 months. Thank you, Jimmy. <laughs> yeah, well, we'll be thinking inside the box, hopefully shortly here. Southern 207 Hobbies, breaking for three months. What's the thoughts on the Folkestone, Georgia head-on? Um, I, It sounds like the crew is all okay, and that's the biggest thing. Um, I was looked like it was pretty nasty, but um, the fact everyone's all right is always a good thing. Um, it, it's for the NTSB and the officials to figure out what happened and figure out if there's lessons learned. Anything I would say would be like just totally speculative, so uh, not worth saying much more than that. Glad the crew is okay and uh, that there's not been you know too much bad uh, badness after that one because those things do happen from time to time. Drake the Rail Fan, imagine looking at a Mason bogey and then looking up to see that crap. <laughs> also, one year, time goes so fast. A year as a conductor. Thank you, my friend. Sam DeCastro, I got to see Dusty's Nuts on Friday, 10 out of 10. I'm glad. <laughs> and Bandan, so you had to put a hex on it. Is he a witch? A witch! Burn him! Burn the witch! Yeah, pretty much. I could just show everybody what I made last week, too. I mean, you know. Before the nuts, I made something else. You did. What did you? The other, the cylinder cock. Oh yeah, D Dusty's made Dusty's made a cock and nuts in the past two weeks. Hold on, let me upload those. Because <laughs> everybody's gonna be like, what? What? Cylinder cocks, phrasing. Cylinder cocks, still cocks. They were valves before they were yeah, anything yeah. else. It's fine. It's Come fine. On. It's fine. Next, next you're gonna say he screwed something. I bet he oh, did. Oh, that's just yeah. I screwed my nut on the shaft. So I mean, there's that. It's a pin. It's not a shaft. Well, that's true. Yeah, pin. Sorry. <clears throat> you screwed Come your on. nut on the knuckle. That's what you yeah. did. Everybody's so lost right now as to what we're talking about. Once you get to the uh, cab, you can start nailing stuff. Why? Mm -hmm. Why? Do you see this right now, guys? They've got like a two degree angle on the interior door sheet in the firebox. Oh. Interesting. Like, it is like there's not even a dimension anywhere. That's obnoxious. I'm obnoxious. <laughs> Good lord. 
chat is like halfway nothing but messages that need to be approved for cock. <laughs> <laughs> Text upload. There it is. VC text. <laughs> Beautiful. As I Dusty said, Cox. It is beautiful. Yeah, gee, why did we need to, to say. why did yeah. we need to remake these? I don't know. Ferocity, huh? That Ferocity looks, and that casting. looks fine. Why doesn't that seal? I don't know. Good lord. Yeah, that's what a cylinder cock looks like. At least the ones on twenty. The internals. Well, yeah, that they all have that same internal little plunger like that, basically. The bodies are slightly different on 91 and 346. True, true. There's so many cocks in the chat. <laughs> I will say that is a pretty smooth cock. It is. It's a big shiny cock. Again, it's only, raising. It's only like a half inch thick, though. It's yeah, little, little, it's it's long though. Leaves well, okay. Leaves a little to be desired. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Had to make it fit the hole. Mm. Yeah, you don't want to have to pound it in there. They no. don't like it when it has to get pounded no. in there. That's why you heat it up first. <laughs> so you get liquid cock in the hole. Whoa! <laughs> wow. <laughs> <Whoa. laughs> <laughs> Pilot Pagasi, see, I... not to muddy the waters any, but I see you've got a nice foundation of the boiler now. Nice to catch a stream live. Good to see you, my friend. Ram on 1225. Hey, Hyas, how you doing? So I remember when I mentioned a lubricator not driven by valve gear mishap. Well, you found a YouTube video. Uh, okay. Uh, I'm going to open that in a separate tab and, and see what uh, that is. Mechanic lubricator is not like authentic and accurate in the way that it works because it's clipped for me. Yeah. By the valve gear. It just it's kind of on off are you lubricating things and so if you turn it on right now it'll just drip all of uh yeah that's the clip from my uh yeah that's 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 how dero valley does it which is kind of eh. but anyway jordan freeman virtual ref and caught the collision on their folkston webcam and included it in a grab bag posted to youtube today oh lordy yeah they uh they got cameras everywhere so always amazing when they uh manage to catch something like that Freeman 1225. Also, just want to say she looking good digitally. Love that. And Matt Houston in Kronk's voice. Hey. hey. Nice, nice cock. cock. <laughs> you know. The cock, the cock specifically machined for 20. You mean that cock? Yes, that cock! Right. <laughs> I got turned into a cow. Can I go home? <laughs> Does anybody else need to go home? The rest of you, after them! <laughs> <sighs> so how does... How, 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 I'm, I'm struggling to picture how the interior sheets go together. I need to look at that pic. I pulled up a, um, a piece of reference that Brett had sent me. Um, of a locomotive getting its foundation ring assembled. Because it's easy to think how the piece is put together, but then how does the firebox go to that? Oh, that's not fair. This choo-choo used one piece for its entire thing because it's small. That's just one piece all the way around. That's wacky. But I guess not impossible. What's the size difference between that one and uh, Zuma's? Wish I knew. It's probably not 
two st I mean, Zuma's is a lot longer than this. They're probably comparable in width. Maybe Zuma's is a smidge wider, but Zuma's is probably twice as long, just aspect ratio-wise. Sorry to break the stream and leave, but apparently dinner's ready, so I gotta get going. <laughs> Thank you for right. sharing your cocks and your nuts. Yep. yep. Um, and uh, I'll see you later this week. <laughs> we'll, we'll talk to you guys later. <laughs> Bye. See ya. Toodles. Farewell. Also, making that one part in SolidWorks is going to be a joy. I wonder how they did that. I wonder, it must have been welded somehow. Which we're trying to design it as a riveted boiler. Is that Mountaineer's boiler? I am not sure. It's a picture that Brett sent me. Well, I think I'm going to, I guess I'm going to start with a, I'm going to start with a, a side sheet and then we'll kind of figure out the joints kind of as we go, I guess. And we'll, we'll see how far we get with that. My brain is already mush from staring at this shit. So. Round 1225. Um, am I the one missing something here? Is it just me? Or are you saying in the clip that the lubricator isn't driven by the valve gear confused? Yeah, in Dear Old Valley, the lubricator is not driven by the valve gear, which is incorrect. It should be for that style of lubricator, but it isn't. It's got a rod that connects there, but when you turn the lubricator on in the game, it just says, okay, lubricator doing the thing, um, rather than pumping as the valve gear cycles. So um, that's the nuance there. John Deere Boy. Long time no see, man. Good to see you here. My family may be acquiring another tractor built in 1940. She's a high-end start, so I'll get to throw out your back every time you fire it up. Either way, she's pretty and would make a fine addition to my collection. Dude, that'd be rad. Be super rad. Show me a picture if you end up getting it. The Baldwin Locomotive Works, it's not my fault you don't understand engineering genius. <laughs> okay, Jeremy Clarkson. <laughs> Dan Tanner, a fireman for 14 months, happy to catch a stream. Was there any disadvantage to cab forwards from a mechanical standpoint, namely having the engine sets essentially running in reverse all the time? Uh, reverse all the time is not a big deal. Wall shirts and most of the valve gears are set so that they can run evenly in both directions. Uh, and running in reverse doesn't really change anything astronomically. Uh, the biggest thing, and the thing that I wish I had more details for and i don't have i don't know if i'm gonna have a picture of um is that a pilot truck and and this is something that it seemed like people didn't understand from the video uh partially because i don't understand the whole logistics behind it but the pilot truck on a cab forward is not a standard trailing truck uh because it can't be because it's designed to be a lead truck like the design between a lead truck and a trailing truck are different one is designing to pull the frame into curves uh, and adjust the suspension accordingly, and one is designed to bear weight. Uh, and so the, the cab forwards truck lives somewhere in the middle, and I, and I wish I knew more about it. I would love to talk to somebody from SP Mechanical back in the day, but um, I'm not sure uh, if, if anyone exists that knows that or anything. So, um, you know. Uh, maybe somebody knows that uh, that has that knowledge, but uh, I'm not sure who I'd even get to talk to about that. So, um, but yeah, uh, you know, I, I would imagine it would track slightly different based on that lead trailing truck, not quite the same thing, um, which is why 
talking about tender first, some people are like, why don't, why don't you just do tender first? And it's like, well, uh, it, it, <laughs> you're then push pulling and you're doing all these things and having games of stuff. And there's a reason that they spent the money to do it this way, put it that way. So, uh, but reverse all the time for the engines. No, it doesn't really make a difference. Mr. Shooter 4, your, your horse bit me on the butt. Oh, wait, wrong movie. Yes, correct, wrong movie. Sir Liv, op sessions are just Dungeons and Dragons role playing for model railroaders to discuss. Uh, yeah, one late in Moreland makes you roll a d20 for every car that you put in your train. Uh, and if you crit fail, you have to drink a beer and take the car to the car shop. And the car is done at the car shop when you finish your beer. So, uh, literally, it is literally D&D role playing for model railroaders. Connor Stroud, one whole year and a few months. Thank you, sir, for all the great, amazing content from us over the pond. Thank you, Connor. I'm glad you enjoy. And your frame, cab Ford pilot trucks. You might be able to track drawn, uh, down someone who's made live steam models of one. I know one or two that exist. Oh, yeah. That'd be a good way to look at that because they would, they would certainly know. That's a good call. Cheers, Andrew. Okay. Um, what are these obsessions? Uh, at Layton's <laughs> Model Railroad, when that when you run on the H one three, if when you're building your train at the yard at um, Entrada, which is his stand-in for Salida, um, <laughs> you build your train, and at, as you're adding cars to the train in the yard, every car you have to roll a d twenty, and if you crit fail, the car's got to go to the car shop, and you have to drink a beer before you can put it back in your train. That's your penalty. And then once you drink your beer, you can put the car back in your train. You can, you know, go run on the layout. So it's a, it's a fun okay. role, role play mechanic. <laughs> what? Well, why am I just now hearing of all this? It's been talked about awesome. on the channel before. It's probably been a long time. We haven't done a, uh, we haven't done a lot of stuff at Layton's layout in terms of Layton's layout in a while. Uh, we did the, uh, the cursed switch machine install video probably six months ago now. Um, maybe even more, but uh, we'll, we'll get to another Layton layout update at some point. I, I actually gave him a GoPro a couple weeks ago. Uh, he's got one of the GoPros on loan to uh, film some model train content and post it on his YouTube. So hopefully we'll uh, we'll get some of that. But at the same time, uh, you know, it's a hobby and you don't want to turn that into more work at the same time, too. So uh, we'll see what he comes up with. <clears throat> so. Southern Pacific AC9, things have sucked recently, almost ended your own life a few weeks ago. However, with all the wonderful people I met, because of you, it's gotten much, much better. Thank you, all of you. My friend, I am so glad you're still here. The, the time of life you're going through right now, at that age, is so challenging, especially for those of us in this space that like trains and like this weird niche thing. Um, and it's really hard, and a lot of people don't understand any of those things. Uh, so know that we're we're here for you and we're happy that you're still around and that things are getting better uh, and happy to help the best way that we can. So um, we're always here for you, my friend. Uh, you, you've got my Discord. Feel free and shoot a message, shoot a call, whatever, whenever you need. So I'm glad you're still, still here with us. Liam04, SP never recorded any issues with the late AC's trucks. Okay. Cool. I mean, I would just love to know the designs because I know that they uh, they float the uh, the uh, the gap between trailing truck and lead truck. So I'd love to know the the details on it. But let's see. <laughs> do, do we do? I think we try and do the uh, the the not sad uh, hard corner curved bull crap. Uh, tube sheet i think if we can or firebox sheet because lord all right so we're gonna try and draw an interior firebox sheet here the interior of the firebox it's 19 inches across apparently so we'll get that guy and do 19 over two Uh, 
and then we will run up. How how high does it go? 16? A little bit more than the 16 inch. I don't know. I guess we'll, we'll draw the profile and kind of figure it out from there. Kind of that vibe for a interior firebox. And we have this as being a, wow, we almost nailed that on the drawing. Good Christ. It's supposed to be 13 and 5 eighths and it was within, it was within like 20 thousands. That's, uh, that is uh, delightful. Goodness. That's um, that's crazy. Steam ten one two one twenty two. You're probably writing the tail end of the stream. Love you, heist. Probably gonna be sending you some more physical mail soon. Also reach the full term nine months. Gonna go cook. Catch you later. Take it easy, man. Um, yeah, we're probably we're within the last half hour. I'd probably say of the stream. So, uh, finishing up with uh, I want to I want to get some of the internal firebox in, but yeah. Yeah, the, the brain scrambled egg is real today, so. John Deere boy posted his uh, tractor in VC. Oh, did he? Yeah. Okay. And he's here. Oh, well, oh. hi, John Deere boy. The one I'm, my family's looking at buying anyway. It's not ours yet. That looks rad. With the big tires on the back, it's fun. And you say it's a 1940? Yep. As cool. far as the owner has told us, it's a 1940 Model B. It's gorgeous. Okay, uh, I, I know you started typing uh, reply to me, but there's no pony on that? Are you for, are referring to, like, a pony motor? Yeah. Uh, no, the only models that I'm aware of, well, the only models, period, that would have even had them were the diesel models that John Deere started making early uh which would have started with like the model r um maybe the 80 or 820 might have had them as well but by that time they started um going to like just straight 24 volt electric starters i think it's 24 volt that seems like a hell of an engine to try to turn over by hand yeah so it's really hard to see in the picture um i might be able to find a, one of one of my tractors but there are um small they're i think they're called petcocks that basically open the cylinder to the atmosphere at you know a certain point so that it reduces the compression enough so that you can actually turn it over That's cool. Some of the um, some of the AMD diesel locomotives had similar to that back in the day. I think they're called decompressors. If I remember right. Uh, in the railroad, always needing to have more cock in our life, we call them flash cocks. But <laughs> is that because if you left them open and started firing, it would get a lot of flash in the engine compartment? I, I would guess so. <laughs> I should just use an offset entities on this later. Let's be smart about this.
talking about pressure and release from earlier, our center cap GEs have the same thing, where you got to throw the lever, start it, and then rock it over. Hmm. That's cool. Yeah, a lot of times uh, when Lori's starting something, especially a diesel by hand using the crank, it'll have some sort of compression release. Hmm. That makes sense. Now we just need a height there, and it's going to be about like that. Okay. It's undefined about that. Okay, that point is unknown how tall it is. And we know that the firebox is 48 inches deep inside. Or maybe it's 48 and a quarter? Or no, that's the length. I have that dimension somewhere. It's in the spec sheet. Ah, let me go find it. Discord server that's in anymore. Oh, it should be that one. Too many servers. Literally. Okay, 32 inches deep inside. There we go. All right, so the overall height from the very bottom up to the very tippy top is 32 inch. All right, so that is our side sheet profile. Um. I don't think we have a sheet thickness on it. It looks thin as fuck is what it looks like. Um, and I'm just gonna offset entities and go three eighths for now. Call it a day. So that is our side sheet profile. Should be able to extrude it, make some stuff happen. Logan Jones, hey, hi, it's working on M5s, picking up again. All her rods, minus eccentrics are back on. Boiler fittings are next. Expect updates soon. That's exciting. Always good, always good vibes. We're just about to take 346 Dur to, down to Durango soon, so we're uh, looking forward to that too. A person 723. John Deere, R80, 820, 830, 720, 730. Could have pony motors, also the 70, I believe, and many caterpillars had them. There you go. Um, our, our caterpillar has a pony motor. <laughs> our caterpillar on a Davenport giant, stupid two axle diesel stick shift locomotive, but yeah. Anyway. Nazu, three more months until two years. Time is fake. Chicken Alfredo pizza with shredded pepper jack cheese is gold. What a glorious Montezuma Tuesday. Love that. Yeah, it's great. I was Molly talking about uh, Best of the West. Oh, yeah. John Deerboy, you should go to Best of the West. Just saying. I'll be there. I don't know if you're familiar or not, but uh, worth going. Simzam, Farmall is superior tractor. Don't you start a tractor fight in my DMs here right now. <laughs> Bet. All, Oliver, that's where it's at. I'm biased. I'll allow Oliver, but get the crap out of here with that red stuff. Wait, did Huber make gas-powered tractors? 
they made a shit ton of gas powered tractors. The Super 4 was a very long lived cool tractor. You see more of those than the they steam engines, but. Technically, they still make uh, little graders. Let's see. I got pictures of the Super 4 somewhere in here. I didn't know that. Of all the tractor shows my dad took me to, I've never seen a Huber. They're not that common, unfortunately. But yeah, they, um, here's at the Huber Museum. There's a couple Super 4s. And they look like old boys. They survived until the 70s. So yeah, I mean, nothing, nothing newer than that. So they're cool. Cool old tractors, though. Yeah. I also um, sent another picture of kind of zoomed in where the petcock would be for the cylinder in uh, VC text, if you want to look at it. Yeah. So that angled piece where your cursor kind of was, that kind of comes down and attaches to the frame. Yeah. Right behind that, you see that like little kind of lever sticking down? On the... So it's it's going to be on the engine block right above the frame. On the block, but right above the frame. Yeah. Like the lever is like touching, the little tiny lever is touching the frame. Oh, right there. That little guy. Yeah, yep. Sorry, I was waiting for a stream to catch up. Yeah. So you basically pull that so it's pointing straight out and that kind of opens up the cylinder so that you can crank it over. Huh. That's nifty. Uh, a great solution for a human torque problem. That's fun. Yeah. It didn't become... It became less relevant when they became electric start. Right. Because the if you had a good battery the electric starter was able to push through that compression right but it was very very handy especially on the bigger engines or bigger tractors when you know they were human torque so right for sure Just start with by extruding that 51 and a half inches and kind of see what happens here. See about putting one of them in. <laughs> From SITS, engineer for 17 months. Sporgo, Borgo, Borgo! Bo. <laughs> yeah? Just like that? Okay. <laughs> I guess, sure. Gamer boy, Massey Ferguson. Uh, okay. Shrug? So live... It's, a, it's we... a tractor company. Ah, okay. That makes more sense. So live, I thought the plan when you build Zumo is to have a live steam miniature style boiler built for her. Has that changed? Um, yes and no. We don't know exactly how her boiler is going to get built. So we're building a... Designing a riveted kind of as it was, but updated to be somewhat sane uh, version. That's what I'm working on drawing up right now. Because um, ultimately, at the end of the day, whoever's going to end up building the boiler is going to end up doing the final engineering on it anyways, because of the way that the certs work out. Um, so we just kind of need to get a facsimile in there that makes some amount of sense, and that's what we're trying to get done. So. Nazu John Deere is close to my heart because it's everywhere here, including having a major road named after it. It's cool. Zimzam, yeah, but Farmall Letter Series styling was done by Raymond Lowy, so take that. Ooh. The, the, the tractor fight hath begun in the super chats. <clears throat> the Pearl Bus Boot Camp got some cool railroad history you'd love to model and share. Hi, sis, Minecraft server is a great place to start for that. We're working on a 20s trolley park myself. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, Minecraft server is great. Go check it out. Person723, the farm all gas starts diesels like the MD or 450 were decent. The early 460s and 560s were absolute garbage that exploded the entire transmission case. Lordy. And, hey, uh, you do not talk shit about the farm all MD. Those things are awesome. Uh-oh. The, uh, the, 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 the tractor drag out fight is here. 
And Jonathan, John Deere R? AR? AR, yeah. It was a variant of the Model A. Um, I don't know a whole lot about it, um, other than that it looked nothing like the normal Model A. Interesting. to made up somewhat correctly here. But yeah, no, Mark, if you ever want to see some insane engineering, look at the Farmall MD. It started on gas, and then as you flipped the lever to switch it to diesel, it shut a bunch of ports to change the compression ratio so it can run on diesel. But it, it there was no throttle for the gas. All it did was warm it up and get the motor spinning. Out of the same engine block? Yep. Yeah, the same engine block, cylinders, everything. What? The pony motors on the John Deere ones, I don't remember exactly how they worked, but there really wasn't a throttle for them either. They just, I think what they did was they ex their exhaust gas went through the main, the like the diesel engine part to like warm it up, I think is how they worked. I don't know a lot about the diesel John Deere's, the early ones. Um, that's something that I'm going to have to start learning if I want to have a couple of them. A lot of pony motors uh, did that exhaust into the intake of the diesel, and they'd also warm up the coolant to heat up the engine block of the diesel as well. But yeah, the uh, the Farmall MDs, man, uh, I don't know if anybody here has watched it, but there's a YouTube channel called Just a Few Acres Farm and he talks about that in some of his videos. Oh yeah, watching him completely restore his MD was wild. Huh. And then I almost cried when the uh, the valve dropped into the body. I think I'm going to draw up and make the crown sheet, and I think we'll finish with that for today. Let me uh, go through these top chats here, I guess, as we're seeing here. Midland 1072 Productions, engineer for 17 months for Zuma. Always nice to see more progress on the Zumi boy. Yes, sir. Thank you, Midland. Bombcat 12, a cockshut is a red Oliver. I assume, I, more that tractor, I assume that's more tractor. I assume that's more tractor. Yeah, me too. Uh, it, and then it's not a common one. Rex Anger, the little gray Fergie, Massey Ferguson T20 tractor has a cult following in the upside down like Volkswagen combis do. I'll find you somewhere he can see some more. <laughs> I didn't realize we were turning into tractor stream here, but I'm here for it. It's, it's tractor Zuma Tuesday. That's it. Tra yeah. Tractor but, but we're Zuma here Tuesday. For Zuma. Well, Zuma's got less tractive effort than most steam traction engines, probably, so seems seems appropriate. <laughs> probably has less than my garden tractor. I might. Can this locomotive mow your lawn? Well, we're not sure. <laughs> Once. Well, well, well no, with, the, uh, with, with the with with the the traction motor B unit, maybe. Perhaps, perhaps. It can't the, mow your lawn, but it can fit through the uh, drive-thru. That is true. <laughs> okay, if we're, we're, we're talking about tractors now. Uh, Lance Bulldog. I don't know if anybody uh, has heard of that. them. It's a German company, old. Uh, single cylinder diesel, and it's like huge diesel. And uh, it's a single cylinder, uh, two stroke. So the engine can spin forwards and backwards, and you can even idle at zero RPM. Sorry, what? I'm sorry, what? Yes, a single cylinder, two stroke diesel, you can idle at zero RPM. The crankshaft doesn't spin all the way around it gets like part way there oh, yeah. and then kicks back to the other side and it just keeps doing that back and forth that is uh wacky as hell
There were some waggy designs in early tractor manufacturing. I believe they were bought out by John Deere. Which company was that? Lands Bulldog. L-A-N-Z Bulldog. Here, Heist, VC text. How far did we extrude the uh, side sheet? I don't remember. It was 51 and a half, but let's look. And then I will look at VC text. 51 and a half, look at that. According to Wikipedia, John Deere purchased lands in 1956. Yeah, I thought it was, uh, I thought it was, you know, like mid 50s, 60s. So, uh, Heiss, is this where uh, Zuma gets retrofitted with superheaters? <laughs> God. Uh, we, we would be to that point. Um, stop turning on thin feature, you stupid garbage software. Is the sketch not closed? Oh, no, it's not, because somehow... That line got turned into a construction line. Two stroke diesel, uh, Montezuma. No. No. We don't want it to go. Oh, uh, yes, just stick a, a 645 block in the tender. It's fine. No, no, no. You just convert the existing pistons into diesel. No. That would fire no, less no. than a hit and miss engine. No, oh, that's the, the Russians did that. It was bad. Uh, yeah, well, the Russians did do that. I forgot about yeah. that pile of garbage. Good lord. It also, sounds like a really good way to send a uh, piston piston head flying into space. Much. You know, Heist, you said it was garbage, but I think the reason why they did it, didn't keep it, was just because it was inefficient. I'm pretty sure it worked. <laughs> no one liked that. No one liked this. No one liked this. This does not spark joy. Alright, this is gonna get a little interesting. Get that face. ka -chow. I almost need a section view. Actually, I think I do need a section view to slice that and be able to see what the hell is going on. So, what what's your sidewall thickness here on Zoomy? Uh, three eighths right now is what I've been working with. Okay. And we managed to. How did that not manage to work out right? Almost there. Why is the crown not the right dimension, though? Do that number wrong. To the exterior sheet, 27 and a quarter over two. And what did I have on the firebox side sheet? And that's 27 and a quarter over two. Uh, okay. So why is that? 
that's to the exterior of that sheet. So why is that? Why is that not lining up? What what stupid SolidWorks ism did we do this time? Let's rebuild and save. Those guys look like they're in the right spots. They're symmetrical. I'm not sure what's going wrong in there. Did my- Is yeah, solid works not working? No, yeah, that's probably something stupid I did. What else is new? Was my mirror incorrect, maybe? Well, it's about the right plane, so that should be fine. And we made the exterior dimension the same as the interior dimension. It does not compute. I'm not sure what's going on there. Um, and I'm sure that it's something simple that I've overlooked, that I've goofed on. And so I'm going to punt for next time, and I'll fix it next time. Because uh, I've had about all the cat I can have today. So we'll, uh, we'll finish out by looking through top chats here. So, all right. If you get the chance, uh, check MOWVC for the zero RPM. <laughs> Roger. see oh that's an actual video of it running too so it is it's just alternating back and forth it's just not making a complete revolution That's wacky. That makes more sense, though. When you said zero RPM, I was like, eh. I now at least understand it a little bit, so. Anyway. Let me go through these. Uh, let me go through these top chats here. Matt Houston, I see your arguments, however, wheel horse. Yes. Sir Liv, possibly designed some kind of Dublin piggyback style roller cart to park Zuma on a converter to a steam tractor. No. No. Uh, that would be silly, but no. Smittle, 22 months as a conductor. Thank you, my friend. Timerman, 765. There's a video by Holster Productions called the Steam Locomotive Tribute. It's actually incredible. A lot of people who want you to react to it because it's a beautiful, well-put video. Interesting. Um, email it to me. Or Discord DM it to me. I'd love to watch it. I haven't heard of that. Maddie Miller. Hi, hi, it's everyone else. Hope you're having a lovely day. Finally went and uh, got a real job. Now you're an aviation refueler. Very excited. Here, have some of my first paycheck. Thank you so much. Far too kind. Take care of you first, but uh, that's cool. <laughs> Slade Franklin, uh, IH, which I assume is International Harvester, had an extra intake valve for gas slash diesel. You'd start crank start on gas and engage the diesel intake, shut the gas. That's the mad dash to the gang gas tank. That is just bizarre, man. That's so neat. T12 Productions, Diesel Zuma is a park train, guys. Pretty much. Yeah. Jordan Freeman, how much does Zuma weigh? Uh, the original weighed 25,000 pounds, engine only. Engine and tender, about 33,000 pounds. Fully loaded, wet, ready to go. So, not very heavy. And Jordan Freeman, we should build a second Zuma and send it off to space on a Falcon 9. 
Uh, if Elon wants to provide the funding, uh, you know, I would be possibly interested, but you know, something tells me that's probably not in the cards. NT12, I am going down the rabbit hole of designing passenger cars for the Zuma. Well, design the, uh, the little dudes, little two axle boys. That's what we need, so. And you guys, thanks so much for tuning in. Love the love and support. Thanks for watching and learning some more about boiler things today. We still got a little bit more ways to go on the boiler and then we'll be there. Uh, tune back in next week. We'll be back at it once again. And I still need to schedule office hours for this month sometime before other shenanigans so that we actually get office hours in. Hmm. Anyway, happy Montezuma Tuesday. Catch you all next time. Peace.